beginning in the late 1970s. Heavy metal enthusiasts were dubbed metalheads or headbangers by the end of the decade. Glam metal became popular in the 1980s because to bands like Bon Jovi and Motley Crue. Meanwhile, underground cultures spawned a slew of more aggressive Bay styles. Thrash metal became mainstream thanks to bands like Metallica, Slayer, Megadeth, and Anthrax, while other extreme subgenres like death kitchen. metal and black metal remain niche. Popular styles have broadened the definition of the genre, since the mid 1990s. Groove metal and new metal are two examples with the latter incorporating elements of grunge and hip-hop. Characteristics Heavy metal is known for its distorted guitars, dramatic rhythms, deep bass and drum sound, and aggressive vocals. Heavy metal subgenres accentuate, change, or eliminate one or more of these characteristics in different ways. In the taxonomy of popular music, heavy metal is a significant subspecies of hard rock the breed with less syncopation, less blues, more showmanship, and more sheer force, writes New York Times critic John Perels. A drummer, bassist, rhythm guitarist, lead guitarist, and singer, who may or may not be an instrumentalist, make up a standard band configuration. To add to the fullness of the music, keyboard instruments are occasionally used. John Lord of Deep Purple played an overdriven Hammond organ. In 1970, John Paul Jones utilized a Moog synthesizer on Led Zeppelin III. By the 1990s, synthesizers were used in virtually every type of heavy metal. Heavy metal has long been defined by the electric guitar and the sound strength that it generates through amplification. The sound of heavy metal guitar is created by combining high loudness with thick fuzz. To keep open spaces and air in the song, guitarists maintain gain at modest settings, without severe preamp or pedal distortion. The guitar amplifier is turned up loud to generate the trademark punch and grind. Scooped mid-frequencies and a densely compressed sound with multiple bass frequencies Bay characterize the, the tone of thrash metal guitars. Guitar solos are an integral aspect of the heavy metal code that emphasizes the guitar's centrality the in the genre. At least one guitar solo appears in the majority of heavy metal tracks a key means by which the heavy metal performer demonstrates virtuosity, Bay according to kitchen. Wikipedia. New metal and grindcore bands, for example, are known for omitting guitar solos. The heavy crunch Bay sound in heavy metal is achieved by palm muting the strings with the picking hand and adding distortion with rhythm guitar parts. Palm muting enhances the bass end and generates a tighter, Bay more precise chan. sound. In heavy metal, the lead guitar often clashes with the vocalist's conventional frontman or conductor role resulting in musical tension as the two contend for dominance in a mood of affectionate competition. Heavy metal requires the voice to be subordinated to the band's overall sound. An explicit expression of emotion from the singers is essential as a sign of authenticity, reflecting metal's roots in 1960s counterculture. The tone of voice of the metal singer is more significant than the lyrics, According to critic Simon Frith, the bass's strong position in the metal sound is also important, as is the interplay between the bass and the guitar. The bass is responsible for the music's heavy low-end tone. In heavy metal, the bass is more significant than in any other rock genre, says the author. Metal bass lines range in complexity from a simple basis of holding down a low pedal position to doubling complicated riffs and licks alongside the lead or rhythm guitars. Some bands employ the bass as a lead instrument, a style popularized by Metallica's Cliff Burton in the early 1980s, who emphasized bass solos and chords while playing the bass. In his bass lines, Motorhead's Lemmy frequently used overdriven power chords. The trifecta of speed, power, and precision is the essence of heavy metal drumming, providing a loud, consistent beat for the band. 
Drumming in heavy metal takes an extraordinary degree of stamina, and drummers must have great speed, coordination, and dexterity to perform the intricate patterns. The cymbal choke is a common metal drumming technique. It involves striking a cymbal and then quickly silence it by seizing it with the opposite hand or, in some circumstances, the same striking hand, resulting in a blast of sound. Metal drums are typically substantially bigger than those used in other types of rock music. Double kicks and blast beats are used by black metal, death metal, and some mainstream metal bands. With Loudness or, as sociologist Dina Weinstein puts it, a onslaught of sound is essential in live performance. With Heavy metal concerts are described as the sensory equivalent of battle by psychologist Jeffrey Arnett in his book Metalheads. Early heavy Bait metal artists like Blue Cheer, following in the footsteps of Jimi Hendrix, Cream, and The Who, set new loudness records. With All we knew was we wanted more power, said Dick Peterson of Blue Cheer. Excessive volume in particular figured into the band's impact, with according to a 1977 review of a Motorhead event. Weinstein argues that, just as melody is Bait the most Kachan. important aspect of pop music and rhythm is the most important aspect of dance music, so is melody. Metal is defined by its robust sound, timbre, and volume. The loudness, she claims, is intended to transport the listener into the sound and give the song a blast of youthful vitality. With the exception of bands like Girl School, heavy metal musicians were nearly exclusively male until the mid-1980s. Women began to make more of an influence in the 2010s, according to Craig Hayes of Pop Matters, who claims that metal obviously empowers women. There have been a number of bands in the symphonic and power metal subgenres that have had women as lead singers, bands including Nightwish, Deline, and Within Temptation have featured women as lead singers alongside males performing instruments.